Hello everyone, today I'm here to do an author related video and today we are talking about Sophie Kinsella. I don't know who Sophie Kinsella is, she writes predominantly women's fiction or chick lit if you want to call it chick literature. I call it chick lit just because a lot of other people call it chick lit so I call it chick lit. And she has published a lot of books, like over 15 and I have read the vast majority of them. Some I have not read which I will go into more detail about. Pretty much what this video is going to be about is me talking all about Sophie Kinsella's books. I'm going to talk about my favorites, I'm going to talk about ones that I didn't like, I'm just going to tell you all about her. See if maybe you would want to read it. That's the whole That's the whole goal of these author videos is see if maybe you would like to try this author. Maybe you could, if you've been wondering about Sophie Kinsella, I can tell you more about her to see maybe if you are interested in reading her or not. So yeah, let's get right on to it. So like I said, I have read the majority of Sophie Kinsella books and I have to say she is my favorite hands down chick lit author. I pretty much love all of her books. There have only been a few that I really have not liked, but the majority of her books I love. First, I'm going to talk about the books that Sophie Kinsella is primarily known for and that is the Shopaholic series. I'm sure you've heard of this. If you've not heard of the books, I'm sure you've heard of the movie that came out a while ago. Um, it had Isla Fisher in it, I want to I want to say, and the movie like wasn't amazing, but you know, that's how it goes sometimes with book and movie adaptations. There is eight books, I believe, in this series, and it's still ongoing. I don't know about that, if it's still ongoing. I know the eighth book just came out literally last year or the year before, and that was Shopaholic to the Rescue. I've read the first three in these series. I've read Confessions of a Shopaholic, of course, Shopaholic Takes Manhattan, and Shopaholic Ties the Knot. I do really enjoy this series, and I'm not giving up on it completely, but it is eight books long, so it's just a lot to go on. And I feel like we kind of get the same sort of feeling with each of these. We have Becky Bloomwood, who is a shopaholic. That's what the whole premise is about. She buys too much and she can't afford that and it's all about her antics and while she is a very enjoyable character and they are enjoyable and they are enjoyable books I feel like eight's a little bit kind of too lengthy because I feel like it's kind of the same thing every book but you know there's different ones I know there's Shopaholic and Baby, Shopaholic and Sister, all that kind of stuff but it is an enjoyable series I would recommend it I do really like the first one and with all of Sophie Kinsella's books I will say hands down listen to them via audio they are amazing I believe Sophie Kinsella is British I'm not too sure about that I apologize but all of her narrators in her books are British and I think that just makes it more fun. I like their humor. I like the way they talk and it's just really awesome. Sophie Kinsella's books I think are just amazing on audio. The humor in the books is already funny but put them on audio and it's even more amazing. I love it. So any Sophie Kinsella book I talk about today I highly recommend it to you on audio and I actually listen to the majority of her books rather than read them. There have been a couple that I've read but I will have to say the ones that I really love I've actually listened to so I will always recommend you listen to her books. Listen to them and there's Good. and a lot of these are quite older so you can find them at your library on CDs or maybe in overdrive and stuff like that so I would highly recommend audiobooks always. The Shopaholic is a really good series. Like I said I read the first three so I'm, I haven't read the last five so those are the only five books that I have not read by Sophie Kinsella. I take that back. I have also not read Finding Audrey by her and that's her YA book. I might read that, I might not, I don't know. Anyway let's go to the books I have read because that's what you're here for. Other than her eight shopaholic books and her Finding Audrey books, she has written seven standalone novels that are of the chick lit variety of the women's fiction variety and I have read all of those. I'm going to tell you what my three favorites are of hers and maybe I can coerce you into reading them. Maybe not but I'll just tell you why I love them so much. My favorite Sophie Kinsella novel hands down and I talk about this regularly is I've Got Your Number. This is such an amazing book and again I listen to this book. I highly highly recommend the audiobook. It is just amazing. This is all about a girl named Poppy and Poppy has a good life. She's never felt luckier. She's about to marry her ideal man and she, then all of a span and one afternoon her life begins to fall apart because she loses her beautiful, luxurious, amazing engagement. Not only has she lost her engagement ring during a hotel fire drill, she also somehow manages to lose her phone as well. She's trying to find things, she's trying to get things, and she finally finds an abandoned phone in like the top of a trash can so she quickly takes it and like I'm just gonna use this until I can find my stolen phone. But then the phone's owner is a businessman named Sam and he is like what do you have my phone with and apparently it was his assistant's and now Poppy is helping him kind of throughout a way and it's a very very hilarious book. This has got to be one of her funniest books. I love the humor this. I love the romance. The romance is just so beautiful and I love this one. Poppy is one of my favorite main characters because she is just quite literally hilarious. So I love I've Got Your Number. If you are just looking for a quick, cute, funny, romantic read, look no further than I've Got Your Number because this was just gold in my opinion. I just, ugh, I love this book. Audiobook was just phenomenal. My next favorite of hers is actually her latest release. and This literally just came out this week and I actually had a chance to listen to it early so I don't own the physical copy yet but I will be picking up 
as soon as I can. And that is my not so perfect life. I'm surprised I loved it as much as I did, if I'm honest with you, because the Goodreads reviews weren't so ecstatic about this. So I was like, oh, it's not gonna be that great. I freaking adored it. Again, I listened to an audio, highly recommended on audio. It is amazing. This is a different type of Sophie Kinsella novel as well. Um, this is all about a girl named Katie, or as she's trying to brand herself as Kat, and she's trying to make it in London. She's trying, she works at a branding agency, and she really looks up to her boss and despises her boss, Demeter, her Demet her boss, she thinks, has the perfect life. She's got perfect hair, perfect wardrobe, perfect husband, perfect family. She goes to all these events. She just really is envious of her boss, and she just can't stand her. Actually moving up in the corporate world, she's maybe getting a few more opportunities with her job, and she's also starting to fall for this guy and things are starting to be on the uplook for her because she's been struggling so much in her London life then all of a sudden she gets fired out of nowhere by her boss Demeter. So she has to go back home in Somerset where her, where her dad owns a farm and her dad is her dad and his girlfriend are trying this new business called Glamping. I'm sure you've heard of it and they ask for her help so she helps them try to brand try to brand this glamping business and make it come to fruition and then when it gets successful who comes to stay at their glamping place? None other than her old boss, Demeter, the one who fired her. So she's out to get revenge and she's going to get it good. So that's what this whole premise of this book is about. And it is amazing. Katie is one of the most realistic main characters I've ever read. She is very much struggling with her life. She is struggling to make it week to week with bills and things. She's struggling to try to find a place in her career. She's just really struggling to figure out who she is. This whole novel is about identity and how we perceive other people. Like I said, she's really envious of her boss, Demeter, and how she has this perfect life. And then when we learn that when Demeter comes to this business that maybe her life isn't so perfect and maybe Katie is now seeing you know there's more to life than like what's on your Instagram because that's a very prevalent thing in this book she has an Instagram and she puts up pictures that she wants her life to be like not what it actually is so this book has a little bit more depth and I'd say it's more focused on Katie and her coming to learn who she is and how her career is going to be more than romance don't get me wrong the romance in this is beautiful and it is amazing but that is not the forefront of this book and most of Sophie Kinsella novels not that there's anything wrong with that because because I love a good romance. But I loved how this one was a little bit different. I love this book. Again, it was hilarious. The narrator for this audiobook was amazing and I recommend this book. It just came out so I would highly recommend listening to it. I think even reading the physical copy would be great. I know I'm gonna get it and I might reread it because I liked it so much. I will have a full book review coming on it soon because I could gush about this forever because I just finished it. And my last favorite book by Sophie Kinsella is 20s Girls. I love this one. The narr the audiobook again was amazing. This is all about Laura and she's also having a hard time in her career and then she starts and then Laura has always had an over imaginative um imagination and then one day she starts hearing and seeing her past her deceased great aunt Sadie and her great aunt Sadie will not leave her alone until she figures out who stole her jewelry. Pretty much Laura is just trying to find her great aunt's um necklace so her great aunt can leave her alone because she, obviously she's the only one who can see her because this is like a kind of a ghost story almost because she's seeing her great aunt that is deceased. I really love this book. It really focuses a lot on family and a lot of things like that and the romance again was amazing in it. The only qualm I have with the narrator in it is that her great aunt would get a little bit shrilly which made the narrator get really shrilly and like yelled a lot and I was like whoa but overall this is an amazing book I highly recommend this one as well this is uh, I just loved it I love how it was really focusing on family Learn more about you know how her great aunt and how she was in her 20s how versus Laura is in her 20s and again an amazing book so those are my three favorite Sophie Kinsella books now I'm going to talk about the rest of her books which I do enjoy but not as much as those three I would say if you've watched this video and you've walked away thinking I might want to read the Sophie Kinsella book I would say pick any of those three and I think you would be great honestly I would say either I've got your number or my not so perfect life those are the two I would highly recommend so in case you're a winner. The other book she has written is The Undomestic Goddess. This is all about a woman who is a lawyer and she is a workaholic, which I could really resonate with because I am a workaholic. Her name is Samantha and she is a workaholic and she's this, she's made this huge, huge mistake in her law firm. So she does the unthinkable. She just leaves her London office, on a train, and ends up in the middle of nowhere and is going to ask for directions. Thinks she's there to interview for the housekeeper and lo and behold, she gets the job. So she's like, well, I guess I'm just gonna go through with this. And so she just moves in and starts like learning how to cook and clean and 
things she does not know how to do and she really starts to embrace life and learn how to really relax and not be so much of a workaholic and enjoy the country life as much as her bustling city life. This is a good one. It's not one of my favorites. I will say like I would put it like in the middle of the pack. I did really enjoy it. The humor in this was good. I don't think I listened to this one on audio. I, I actually read it but I don't know if that took away from anything because I think Sophie Kinsella books are just meant to be listened to if I'm honest with you but I still really enjoyed it and it's a very humor one and I'd say if you are a workaholic it's a perfect book for you because it'll make you like stop and relax or at least hope to stop and relax because I still can't stop and relax. <laughs> the next book I want to talk about is Can You Keep a Secret and I actually really did enjoy this one so I would say those first three we talked about put this one right after them if we want to like get really analytical and put them in order. This is all about a woman named Emma and she's on this plane ride and she is nervous to be on this plane ride so she really just starts unloading all her secrets and everything to her her plane companion of perfectly good strainer. She's like it'll be okay. She's told secrets like let me read these. Um, I weigh 122 pounds, not 118, like Connor thinks. I've always thought Ken, Connor looked like, a bit like Ken, as in Barbie and Ken. And she even starts, you know, laughing about her work life and stuff like that. And she's just fine with it. She's whatever. She's just thought she's unloaded all of her, like, things to a stranger on a plane until it turns out that that is not a stranger on the plane. It is actually her company CEO. Not only is she face to face with him and things are happening and, you know, she, he obviously knows a lot of her secrets, uh, including work secrets and it's things like that. I will say my memory is a bit floggy on this. This is a very, very early Sophie Kinsella book that I have read, but I still remember enjoying it and the humor in this was funny. I think the romance was really, really good in it, but I really liked it. I thought it was very just humorful. Like you're telling all your secrets to someone on a plane that you're like, I'll never see this person again. Just kidding. It's your boss. Like it's your boss's boss boss. Like insanity. Next up we have Remember Me. I did listen to this one on audio. I want to say either last year or the year before. This is about a woman named Lexi Smart who is 28 and she wakes up and she was in a coma and she is 28 but she thinks that she is 25. She has lost the last three years. She cannot remember anything and her life has drastically changed in those three years. She is now married to this really big headshot thing. She has this huge amazing job. She lives in this sleek loft. She, Her teeth are straighter. She looks much more better. She's like how did I end up with this perfect life? because she was having a really horrible life. She thought so when she was 25. So it's basically all about her piecing together the puzzle of what happened in those three years and how she became to have this so much success and how she's really changed as a person and how her friends are really not her friends anymore. And they really love this book. I found this to be one of my lesser favorite Sophie Katsila novels. I didn't enjoy Lexi as the main character. I was really having a hard time um, connecting with her and I didn't, I did like the mystery aspect, but I have read a lot of like um, wake up from a coma and your life has changed, how to figure out type of books and I didn't I will say this is not one of my favorites but if you're an avid Sophie Kinsella fan it's definitely work, worth a read but if you're looking to get into Sophie Kinsella I don't know if I would recommend this one right off the bat. The last book I want to talk about is probably my least favorite honestly and that is Wedding Night. It's about a girl named Lottie who thinks or things are going great in her life. She thinks her boyfriend's about to propose her because they've been dating for a while and then she's surprised when he just was like let's go on a trip together and so she's like what the heck and then she gets a call from a friend that she hasn't talked to in a while to remind her of the pact that they had that when they said that if they turned 30 if they still weren't married to anybody they would marry each other and so lo and behold they go off to this Greek island and just get eloped and it's about that. Also follow up Lottie's older sister Fliss who is married has a kid and a job and trying to remind Lottie this is a horrible decision. The main thing I had my main problem with this book was the two main characters. Lottie and Fliss were just both kind of unenjoyable. I really didn't like either of them. Lottie was kind of just carefree and does whatever which I don't like which I don't mind but I didn't really like Lottie. Fliss was very much more structured and by the rules which again I don't mind but I just didn't really like Fliss. I didn't feel like this book really flowed together well so this is my least favorite of Sophie Kinsella. It's not a horrible book by any means but I just wanted a lot more from it. I didn't like the whole aspect of you know let's just go get married. We don't even know each other. Let's just do it like because we had a pact. I don't know. I just didn't really enjoy it, honestly. So probably the one I'd say I would recommend the least. But anyway, that was basically telling you all about Sophie Kinsella's books. I hope this wasn't too long and lengthy and that you got something from it. And if you are interested in reading Sophie Kinsella, like I said, I would recommend I've Got Your Number and also My Not So Perfect Life. Those who I would recommend, I would recommend listening to all of her books as well. If you have read any of Sophie Kinsella's books, please let me know which one was your favorite, which one was your least favorite, which one would you recommend, and things like that. If you want more author-focused videos, Videos, please let me know down in the comments which author you like me to talk about. I would oh, I would love to know and I would love to make them for you. If you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and hit subscribe and I will see you in my next one. Bye.